Most of the options in the General tab of the Preferences menu control how Photoshop interacts with your various commands. How would you like to zoom in and zoom out? Which version of the HUD color picker do you prefer? I'm going to go through each option in depth. The first thing we have to do is open the Preferences menu. And on the Macintosh, we do that by clicking on the Photoshop option in the top left-hand side of the menu, and we'll find Preferences. If you're on a PC, you're going to find Preferences all the way down below Menus and Keyboard Shortcuts in the Edit menu. I'm going to open up the General tab. Now we can also use Keyboard Shortcut Controller Command K, and I'm going to be doing that frequently throughout the rest of this overview. First thing we see in the General tab is the Color Picker. Our two options here are Adobe and Apple. I can't see any compelling reason to choose anything other than Adobe. They're the ones who created Photoshop, and it just seems to me that any choices that they made in their color picker would be specifically to the benefit of Photoshop, so I'd always just leave that as Adobe. Your HUD color picker preferences. Here we can change the appearance of our HUD color picker from a hue strip, which is what it's set to by default, to a hue wheel, and then we have a couple of different sizes. So let me just show you the HUD color picker here real quick, because this is fantastic. The HUD color picker has a crazy keyboard shortcut. So what you do is you hold down on the Macintosh, Control, Option, Command, and then you click. And that brings up a color picker. Difference in the Preferences menu, you can hit Control or Command K to bring that back up. Uh, we have the Hue Strip, which you just saw. I'll change that to the Hue Wheel so you can take a look at that real quick. And it's the same thing, but with a, a wheel around it instead of the strip. Control K again to bring up the menu. So those are your two options. And then large, if you're working on a really large image, obviously that color strip is not going to work for you. So you want something a little bigger. In this case, it's a smaller image, so it covers my entire image, and we're not going to use that. It's not practical. But again, if you're, if you're working on something that's extremely large, this will work better for you. All right, let's zoom back out. Controller Command K to bring the preferences back up. Past the HUD color picker, we have image interpolation. If you click this drop-down menu, the three basic options you have are nearest neighbor, bilinear, and bicubic. And then there are a couple of different breakdowns of bicubic. So there's your image interpolation. Play with it a little bit and find out what works best for you. The next section in the general tab is the options. And the great thing about this is Adobe has gone to great lengths to give us a tooltip for just about every single thing in their entire program. So here, even if you don't remember what we're talking about today, hover over Auto Update Open Documents, and it'll tell you right here. This determines whether to automatically reread open documents that are updated outside of Photoshop. In this case, Photoshop's my main program, and I don't necessarily export something outside of Photoshop and then bring it back in, although I have to say with the upgraded Adobe Dynamic Link, it makes it real easy to switch back and forth between After Effects and Photoshop, Flash and Photoshop. So if I have several programs open, which in our advanced tutorials in this series, we're gonna get into using several of Adobe's products in concert together, uh, you may wanna have that on, but for now, when you're starting out, just keep that turned off. Beep When Done is an interesting one because usually when I'm working in Photoshop, I'm listening to music and there's no way I'm gonna hear a beep. So that one is probably for me best left off. Dynamic color sliders, doesn't really matter to me. It says here in the tooltip that it, re it determines whether color ramps and color pickers change as sliders move. This has very little effect on me. So honestly, I just leave that shut off. Export clipboard. This is one that we talked about in our initial preferences setup. This determines whether to export contents to another program. So in other words, if you copy a bunch of text in Photoshop, can you then go and paste it in Microsoft Word? That's fine and good, but I usually just turn that on when I need it because otherwise there are some times when I'm copying huge images. So we're talking about 500 megabytes of information just sitting on the clipboard doing nothing. So typically I leave that one shut off. Use shift key for tool switch. I like this one a lot because it allows me access to several tools in the same category just by holding down shift when I press that tool hotkey. So this one I absolutely always leave on. Resize image during place. Let me show you what this means. Um, right now I'll have resize image during place turned on. I hit OK. I'm going to drag in an image from outside of Photoshop and just drop it into what I'm working on right now. As you can see, uh, it resizes this image to be 100% visible inside our workspace. So I'm going to hit Command Confirm, which is the numpad enter. If I do that same thing, hitting Control or Command K, and I shut off resize during image place, hit OK. 
drag that exact same image in and place it. Now you can see that that image was actually a little bit larger than our work area, and it has not been resized. So here I would have to come in and actually resize it to the work area size if that's how large I wanted it. Figure out kind of for yourself whether or not you want to use this. So the animated zoom option just determines whether or not your zoom is animated, which makes it smoother when you zoom in and out. This one doesn't matter for me. I usually just turn it off. I don't know. You could leave it on. It doesn't matter. Zoom resizes windows, determines whether document windows resize when zooming. This one only applies if you have windows that are not taking up the full application. Let me show you what I mean real quick. Just hit OK. If we take this tab that we're working on and just pull it out so that it's in its own window, now when we zoom in, the window is going to resize as we zoom in and out of as we zoom in and out of the image. If we have this turned off, hit OK. Now when we zoom in or out, the window stays the exact same size, and we just zoom in or out of the image. This is when your navigator panel will come into play and holding down the space bar to move your image around. So for now, I'm going to drop this back into the main panel area and hit Control-K. I usually like to leave that one on, uh, particularly if I have seven or eight windows open. I can resize them then all to be roughly the same size. Zoom with scroll wheel. I don't like to leave this one on because if you hold down Alt, you can zoom with the scroll wheel anyway. So I just keep that one shut off. Zoom clicked point to center. Zoom clicked point to center, I usually leave off as well because when I hold down Alt and scroll my mouse wheel, that option is automatically in place. Wherever I'm holding my mouse at the time, that's gonna be the center of where we're zooming into. Enable flick panning is kinda cool. Let's uh, go out and show you what that means. I'll zoom in here a little bit. And now when I hold down spacebar, I can flick my image. And what that essentially means is grab the image by clicking on it and holding it down and then give it a quick little motion and let the mouse go. At that point, it's got inertia. It'll continue to move across the screen. That's interesting and very helpful if you have a particularly large image that you need to cross. So I usually leave that one left on. If we didn't have that left on, I'd fling this and it would just stop wherever I lifted up off the mouse button. All right, back in the preferences. Place or drag raster images as smart objects. Two kind of theories behind this. The first one is this. If you're pulling tremendously large images into your work and you shrink it down, you're going to lose a lot of resolution because Adobe then has to change that image, interpolate it to fit it into the current composition. If it's a smart object, the only thing that Adobe shrinks is that container and your resolution will be intact because your actual image is never changed. Down to the history log. What this does is it saves various actions into either the file itself or a text file or both. Unfortunately, it doesn't preserve your actions, so you can't open a file and later and undo the last three actions before you closed it, but it will tell you what you did. So we can save this either into the metadata of the image itself, which we'll save it as one file, as a text file, which then we have to decide where we want the text file placed, or we can save it as both, the text file and metadata. The log items, we have a choice between sessions only, which means it's only going to record when you open or close Photoshop, concise, which means it will also record the history, every action you take, or detailed, which not only will record the history and when you open and close it, but it will also record anything that you do in the actions panel. Typically, you leave this set to off because the main place you're going to use this is if you're working on something, say, that is a, a copyright of a certain company and they want to know what changes you've made to their image, or if you're working with a team and you need to know who opened the image and when. But for the most part, it's not really needed. So that's all we've got for the, the general tab of the preferences menu. I think we've covered everything pretty well. Um, if you have any questions, send them to requests at mahalo.com. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.